Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. Today I want to talk about and go. No, come on, stop bleeping me out. I'm only talking about blank identifiers. It's not that scary. So I've recently discovered on a, one of the projects I've been working on that my linter crashes. I've been using Golang CI Lint, which I talked about in a previous video. You can find the link here or here, or, uh, I don't know. It'll be in the description too. And it started crashing uh, on, on the newest version. Now this is actually many weeks ago. Um, the old version, version 1.45 seemed to be working fine, but as soon as I upgraded to 1.46 or newer, I got a crash. It looked kind of like this. Literal crash, and not just an error, it actually crashed. The linter itself crashed. Now, uh, version 1.49 just came out of Golang CI Lint, so I thought maybe they had solved the bug in the new version, but alas, they have not. So I decided to find a minimal reproduction case. I spent um, actually not very long whittling away code find, until I could find the minimum that would cause the crash to happen, and I found it. Do you wanna see what the code looks like? This is what it looks like. Yeah, that's it. Just this little underscore with a colon caused it to crash. What is that underscore with a colon? Well, it's a label. Come on, stop bleeping me. It's a blank label. It's not that big of a deal. What is a label? Why would you want a blank one? Well, I don't actually know, but let me show you what a label is. So here's an example of an actual label. Uh, it's used for breaking out of loops usually or switch statements. Uh, so this one, uh, I can if I call break here without the label, it's gonna break from the inner for loop, right? So by using a label, I can tell it I wanna break from the outer for loop. But I found a blank label. You can't reference a blank label. What is a blank label? Let's talk about blank identifiers. So here we are looking at the Golang spec itself and it defines a blank identifier. So the blank identifier is represented by the underscore character. It serves as an anonymous placeholder instead of a regular non-blank identifier and has special meaning in declarations as operands and in assignment statements. So you usually use a blank identifier when you receive more than one thing from a function and you don't care about all of them. So here's an example. We call time.parse uh, and it returns the parsed time and an error. Maybe we don't care about the error for some reason. That's maybe not a good idea, but for whatever reason, we decided we don't care about the error. So you use the blank identifier and then it just discards that result, right? But you can also use the blank identifier in other areas and other contexts. Uh, one, another one that uh, trips up people a lot on Stack Overflow Another common use of the blank identifier is when defining a type that implements an interface. Let me give a simple example. Now let's say we want my foo type to uh, support the IO uh, reader interface. I can use a compile time uh, type assertion essentially to make sure that that works. And it work looks like this. Now this syntax confuses a lot of people on Stack Overflow because it's a little bit strange at first. Why would I create this, this variable with a blank identifier uh, that's assigned to this type? Now the compiler is smart enough to not actually compile this, but it does do the type checking. So it makes sure that uh, at foo can be assigned to a variable of this type. And then right now it can't, that's why you see this squiggly. But if I fix it, But if, you, but if I add the correct uh, function to the type, now it passes. The squiggly's gone, the compilation would, would pass now. So those are the two most common uses of the blank identifier. But when I ran across this blank label, it really got me thinking, are there other uses? Where else can you use a blank identifier? So I started some experiments. Let's see what I found. So I wondered if we could have a blank package name. So I tried it. I created a package with a blank name. I saved it. Invalid package name. Sad, I can't do that. Okay, so I need to have a package name. Done. Could I have a blank function? Apparently I can. Although I don't know what I would ever possibly use it for because I can't call a blank function. I can't think of anything I would possibly use this for. I guess I could use it to bloat my imports for no reason. So now I'm importing a package that I can't ever actually possibly use. If you can think of a possible use case, even if it's contrived and ridiculous for a blank function, let me know, I wanna know. Speaking of impossible things to use, you can't use a blank label either. 
So there's no way you can do this. So the, 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 you can't, I can't break to blank. It's just impossible. There's no way to use this label. It has no possible meaning, except maybe as a, uh, as a visual aid, if you want to break up some of your code, maybe. Can you have more than one? Apparently not. So I can't, at least I can't have two of them in the same block, but I suppose I could create a separate block if I really want to. Now I can have two of them. Now this, this is interesting. Okay, so I, I actually found a compiler bug. Um, one blank label does nothing. I can't use it, I can't access it. But if I add a second one, I get an internal compiler error, label missing tag. Please file a bug report. I think I will file a bug report. Uh, not because it's a useful bug to fix, but just because it's interesting. I'm gonna file a bug report and let's see what happens. If something interesting happens, I'll make another video. Speaking of bug reports, I did file a bug report against Golang CI Lint. So I reported uh, everything I, I was doing. I included my minimal reproduction case, all the version details and debug output and so on. And almost immediately they had a response. They thought it was part of static check. Um, the author of that module wrote back, even with the fix, there's already a fix. It's not, it's not yet into uh, Golang CI Lint, but it's synthetic check, and I'm sure it will be included into Golang CI Lint soon. So if you ever have code that has a blank label in it, uh, this will solve it for you, I guess. You, your linter won't crash anymore. So I, I guess that's kind of the end of my video. Uh, it's kind of a short one. What other uses can you think of for a blank label? Either practical or impractical, I don't really care. Uh, I'm just interested. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think uh, about the blank label or blank any identifier, blank function names, blank variables, blank types. I don't know. Can you do a blank type? Let's try. So apparently I can create types with uh, blank types too. And I can create more than one. I can't imagine why I would ever do this because I can't access these types. They're worse than anonymous. They're like, not, what would you call it? I mean, they're non-existent. You, I mean, they exist, but you can't access them. So I don't know what I would possibly, possibly use this for. If you can think of a use for a blank type, a blank label, a blank function name, or any other blank thing. So that's my challenge to you. If you can find any use, practical or impractical, I don't care. I don't care how ridiculous. Any use for a blank type, a blank function name, a blank label, or any other unusual blank things in Go, leave a comment below. Let me know. I'd love to, to hear about it. And if there's actual useful ones, I'll create another video and, and we'll talk about those later. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos about Go. So quick update, I went to file a bug with uh, the Go project and I decided, you know, I should make sure I'm on the latest version of Go before I do that. And so I updated to 1.19 and the, the bug is gone. So we can all breathe a big sigh of relief. You can now use two blank identifiers if you want to in the same code block for no reason at all.